wildfires across Russia, devastating floods in Pakistan, deadly landslides and flash floods in India and China, heat waves across the United States, severe drought in Niger. Taken together, scientists warn they could match predictions for extreme climate events caused by global warming. This year is on track to be the warmest since reliable temperature records began over a century ago, mainly due to a buildup of greenhouse gases from fossil fuels. That's according to the UN World Meteorological Organization. In Moscow, the heat has doubled the daily death rate. This is Andrei Seltsovsky, the head of Moscow's health department. The average death rate in the city during normal times is between 360 to 380 people a day. Today, we have around 700. This is no secret. Everyone thinks we are trying to keep it secret. Look, it is 40 degrees Celsius on the street. Over 1,600 have been killed by the floods in Pakistan, and landslides have killed over 300 in China. The estimated damage to homes, infrastructure and crops caused by the wildfires and the floods amounts to billions of dollars. And in Russia, among the world's largest exporters of wheat, all future grain exports have been banned for the rest of the year. Well, we begin today with an overview of the extreme weather events in countries around the world. Dr. Jeff Masters is co-founder and director of meteorology for Weather Underground, a weather information website. His latest post is about the heat wave in Russia. Joining us now from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Welcome to Democracy Now! Dr. Masters, uh, talk about first what is happening in Russia. Well, in Russia, they're getting a heat wave unlike anything that's ever been recorded in that country certainly going back the last 130 years when we have good records, and then probably going back as much as 1,000 years if you look at the historical records. There's never been heat like this in Moscow and over this huge area of Russia. To give you some idea of what we're talking about, back in 1920, Russia recorded its highest temperature in Moscow on record, 99 degrees Fahrenheit. That record has been broken five times just in the past two weeks. So this is unprecedented heat, not only for Moscow, but for a huge reason of Russia and some neighboring countries as well. And talk about the effects in Russia, from wildfires to what we're seeing, what, more than 300 more deaths in Moscow alone a day as a result of the heat that also leads to terrible problems of pollution. Yeah, the combined effects of heat and then air pollution and then smoke from fires is a terrible killer. We saw in 2003, when we had a similar heat wave over France and most of Europe, the death toll reached over 40,000. And I think in Russia, we're going to be seeing death tolls certainly in the tens of thousands from this heat wave as well. Uh, the, the smoke in particular is causing a, a tremendous hardship on the people and the elderly in particular in Russia. Talk about the rest of the world, Dr. Masters. Okay, well, the entire world, if you look at the past six months, has experienced its warmest year on record, going back to the late 1800s when we first started making measurements. And so it's not a surprise that we might be seeing record heat waves and record high temperatures being set. In fact, there are 17 countries in the world that have set their extreme all-time heat record this year. And that's the most we've ever seen. The previous time was back in 2007 when 15 countries set their all-time heat record. And those heat records this year include a 128-degree Fahrenheit reading in Pakistan, which is the highest temperature ever reliably recorded in the entire continent of Asia. So there's been heat all over the globe. The ocean temperatures have been at record warm levels this year, and including in the tropical Atlantic, where we're expecting a severe hurricane season. So it's heat, heat, heat is the, the name of the game this year on planet Earth. July 2010 was the sixth straight record warm month in the tropical Atlantic and had the third warmest anomaly of any month in history. What does that mean? Well, when you get those kind of sea surface temperatures, it provides extra energy for hurricanes, which is what we're most worried about, because hurricanes are heat engines. They suck heat out of the ocean, and they convert that heat to the energy of their winds. 
So we're expecting at least double the usual number of intense hurricanes this year, the ones that are most likely to do high levels of damage. And the other thing all that heat does, if it's down in the Caribbean, where a lot of it is, is it causes coral mortality. You get bleaching episodes where you'll kill a large amount of coral. And back in 2005, the last year we had temperatures this warm in the tropical Atlantic, we had a massive die-off of coral, particularly in uh, the Virgin Islands and some of the neighboring islands. Jeff Masters, talk about the United States. Well, in the U.S., we've had some heat waves here as well, particularly in the south. That we've had some daily records set. And as, as a rule, though, we haven't gotten the extreme heat that has been seen in other parts of the world, in, back in, over in Asia and Africa and Europe. So the U.S. has kind of lucked out this year. I mean, it's been hot, but we haven't had a severe drought or extreme heat waves like have been experienced in other parts of the world. Certainly, if we would have had the kind of weather that Russia's experiencing, it would have been an all-time record heat wave for this country and probably been uh, the worst natural disaster in American history. Uh, the Asian Southwest monsoon, exceptionally deadly this year. What countries, what areas, regions of the Earth did it affect? Well, primarily Pakistan, where they had the worst flooding in that country's history but also neighboring areas of India along Kashmir, and then China, where uh, over 700 people are dead today in a landslide that was triggered by heavy monsoon rains. Uh, Afghanistan, as well, has seen heavy monsoon rains. So it's been an exceptional year for the monsoon. And I think part of that is due to the fact that the temperatures have been so warm in that area. I mean, we've seen record heat in Asia this year. And when you have a very warm atmosphere, you can evaporate more water vapor into it, which potentially can cause more flooding. And in fact, if you look at the past few decades, the amount of heavy precipitation events in the Indian monsoon has increased substantially.